everyone, Dylan from the Smart Economy Podcast. We are at day two at Consensus 2024, and we're chatting with Hayden Patrick, the Director of Business Operations at Cordial Systems. Yep. Hayden, thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to chat with us today. No, no problem. Excited. Excited to be participating. This yeah. is an awesome event. We were talking about your background a little bit, but before we kind of like talk about your unique entrance into the blockchain space, what's like the 30-second pitch for what Cordial Systems is? All right, so Cordial Systems, we're an institutional grade uh, treasury platform that operates with a zero trust security model. Uh, so the bottom line is uh, an institution that wants to have full sovereignty over their uh, digital asset uh, will use our technology because it operates within their uh, security perimeter of their own infrastructure. Technology. So, so like I think the thing when it comes to like institutions is like they like having a person they can call when yeah, like yeah. it hits the fan. Yes. So what's like the conversations you're having with institutions that want to be self-sovereign and own these assets on their own? Like is this becoming like a burgeoning, blossoming kind of question they're asking? Well, we think so because now the person that you call is your own IT staff, mm -hmm. right? You're calling people within your lifelines to figure out you know, what are we doing? Why aren't we moving product and that kind of stuff? And this doesn't mean that you wouldn't have customer support for our product, but it's just recognizing that we don't manage, uh, you know, assets. You know, right. We give you the tools to manage assets. If you work with a, a present day SaaS MPC solution that operates on their own infrastructure, you know, then you're gonna call them and yeah. say, hey, my user can't have access, and then you're gonna sit in a queue for who knows how long for them to get resolved. Uh, so we really free the user up to be able to have that process. And with that kind of process, you gotta have a disaster early, or a disaster recovery plan. Yeah. So that way if you do, you know, by accidentally brick one of your uh, nodes or uh, signature mechanisms, that you have the ability to recover it and get it back. Uh, so there's that resilience aspect that you have to answer for itself. But we feel that, particularly in today's regulatory environment, entities like to have control over their digital architecture. Yeah, and so like the clients you guys are speaking with, are they like US based? Are they international? Because we have a lot of regulatory ambiguity here in the States. Maybe last week we had some like good news, but polit politics and legislation takes a long time to get through, so. I agree. Uh, definitely international, uh, mm -hmm. and we also have US involvement. Uh, and we could talk, you know, what that looks like uh, later on. But I actually last, or two weeks ago, I was at the DC blockchain event. Yeah, how was that? Oh, it was great, you know, and, and it was fascinating because it was like you suddenly saw the changing of the wind. <laughs> and it is entirely because I think of the, electri the elections that are coming up and the pressure that both parties don't want to be on the wrong side of the argument. Right. And so that's just like, okay, let's approve, you know, and, and uh, things started to move and that's encouraging. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, you don't want to be late when it comes to building out your, your infrastructure and your plan to service a, you know, some aspect of this industry. And if you wait for the regulation to finally get passed and approved, and then you start to build, eh, there's someone else who is already ready to go. Yeah. I mean, just look at the ETF approvals. I mean, uh, like five or six different entities receive their approval on the same day. So if that's your flag to get going, yeah, you miss it, you know. And so what we offer is, because you can deploy our platform into your own technology stack, you can actually start operating in a way that's gonna be very consistent with, with what regulators believe is the way you should operate. Start building now. And then, you know, if it works out and they approve it, you're ready to go. Uh, and you have full sovereignty over all your digital assets. Yeah, so is there like any like similarities between like an institution wanting to like hold gold and hold their own digital assets? I know there's like Loomis and this is a third party that will secure gold on behalf of an entity, but like is that something that folks are starting to think about? Because we do have from like 2020, a lot of dollars were printed and now we have inflation as a result of that. Yeah. So like are there, is there a new like shift in the winds where people want like a more hard asset or more hard money that they can have on their balance books yeah. and like what do you think that that represents for cordial uh i think 
our customer is more about the people that want to put their money to work, mm -hmm. right? We're not looking at just being a storage repository. Okay. Hey, you mentioned gold. Like, I feel like gold's jumped the shark now because we're selling gold bars at Costco and they're selling out, yeah. right? It's like, okay, come on now. You know, and I don't <laughs> think they're at, there with, 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 uh, with digital assets. Bitcoin might be the exception that people are just going to buy Bitcoin and hold on to it because they believe that it's going to rise. But really what you want is a solution that gives you full security, like you're comfortable with holding assets, but also, is an, also enables you the flexibility to use those assets with the different protocols that you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so what that comes down to is you got to have a very flexible policy generation process that enables you to assign roles and responsibilities and access to all the different people in your organization. Because typically, we're probably not just a team of one. Right. And we saw that. We saw the, the Slurf guy, right? Uh -huh. You remember the yeah, Slurf meme coin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I effed up. Um, it was probably a team of one, but he burned you know, $11 million of value with just a bad click. So that's like the worst of it. You don't want that in your organization. Uh, so if you got three, four, or five people, you want to make sure that there's two-person integrity, right? Yes. You send a transaction, someone else gets in and says, yeah, that's actually a good transaction. Uh, you want your wallets to be obviously associated with a uh, you know, approve or allow list to make sure that you're sending it to the right place. You know, these things are, are pretty straightforward. That should be part of your product. And you should spend some time, architecture, you know, building that architecture to figure out how it's gonna work with your organization. Mm -hmm. With our product, you can then start to create those policies within to make sure that the, the flow of value matches the expectations of your risk management. Sure, so with, so with like Cordial, like if you're dealing with like a 10 person company or like a 500 person company, and each of them need to have like a part of a multi-sig, do you yeah. guys have that as a part of your solution? Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's MPC consensus. Got it. So in fact, the, the cool thing about it is that the signing engine operates on all the policy generation. So not any one person can just go and create uh, a policy. It has to be validated and uh, reach consensus for it to go into effect. Sure. Uh, now you could say, hey, I just want one person. This particular person had the ability to create policies. So you know, you create that policy. And then we use the uh, Cosmos SDK. Cool. Uh, so we're actually operating each instance of our uh, software will include an operating blockchain, private blockchain. Like its own app chain. Yeah, and that's the state. That, that stores the state of truth for your, for your company. And so the validators will say, user A wants to send asset to wallet B, then it's gonna go to that uh, state of truth and verify, one, user A has the rule, and with that rule can trans do this transaction. Sure. Two, this address is on the allow list. And three, this is asset can be moved and within you know, that uh, value, right? Mm -hmm. Says, okay, good, uh, all, the, all the nodes reach consensus. All right, that transaction gets signed and then it goes to the blockchain. So you're building on the Cosmos SDK, but like your yeah. clients might want to like stake ETH, or they might just want to hodl Bitcoin, or maybe there's another digital asset that they want to yeah. have as a part of their solution. So what are the other networks that Cordial so, uh, provides solutions for yeah. that can integrate also with like the Cosmos SDK that you guys have built out? Yeah, so the Cosmos SDK really doesn't interact with the blockchain. That's, okay. that's just the engine. Uh, sure. That's just our engine for uh, verifying the appropriateness of a transaction or action that's being taken. At that point, we have basically a cross-chain library of uh, compatibility with over 30, 30 blockchains. And we had the capacity to add a blockchain uh, pretty much within a week or so. And it's just kind of driven by the user, right? If we were, sure. if we have a customer who's saying, yeah, this is pretty important to us, then you know it's all about, because of the, the way our infrastructure is modularized, if that's the correct word, <laughs> uh, it's about adding like the ability to communicate with that blockchain and then that layer then communicates with our signer, which is agnostic and able to authorize that that uh, appropriate transaction exists mm -hmm. for that blockchain. And then you go back to this uh, compatible uh, mechanism that then communicates with the blockchain and says it works. So it's just kind of like reiterating each time, adding that layer of compatibility 
whenever that requirement is needed. And so you were mentioning that some of your clients, they use like SaaS based solutions, which is, which generally probably has like a centralized entity that's yeah. associated with it where they can like call a call desk. So what are like the solutions that Cordial provides for your clients that might have goofed up and maybe they need an FAQ or a call desk and might, they might sure. need help? Well, without a doubt, there's, gonna, there's a FAQ that's being built out. And it's like every time, and this is an important part about being a high performing uh, operation, right? You learn. And mm -hmm. so every time mm -hmm. you have an experience, you, you break it down, figure out what the nugget was, create a correction if you need to correct, but ultimately you create a learning nugget that you make sure everyone learns about. And if it is going to be there, you add that to your fact. And that's how your fact grows. <laughs> you know, my time in the Navy, you know, we used to call things sailor proofing, right? So, you know, someone would go that breaks something and you're like, oh, sailors. And then you create procedure <laughs> to prevent that from happening again. So it's just like having a big overall fact in the Navy. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, any, any uh, sort of customer relationship is going to include uh, the ability to reach out and communicate with our engineers and, and, and make sure that you have the ability to work your problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we don't divest ourselves of the responsibility of making our sure our software works. Uh, what we do is divest ourselves from the being actively engaged in managing your digital assets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so basically, you are doing that without any third party dependencies. Nice. And so, uh, kind of like zooming out, wrapping up a little bit, can you just share about who some of your clients are? Are they like Web3 natives? And also, as you described, some of your clients who are maybe some other non Web3 natives that are like starting to test the waters and reach out to you? Okay, great. Yeah, so our initial customer is uh, Jump Trading. Uh, in fact, you know they're one of the ones who had a lot of the design impact into how we outfit our platform. They've been using it for two years. Uh, battle tested. I mean, it, the, our platform's been operating in the most intense trading environment for, mm -hmm. for two years, so that's good. Uh, we are also, our technology is being used as, being used as part of the Backpack Exchange. Uh, so the team behind Mad Lads. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I did not get a Mad Lad uh, as part of this process. And if they're listening, uh, you know, <laughs> give me a call. <laughs> yeah, I like learned about that after the fact when I realized, oh, I could have gotten one of those cool NFTs, but I didn't. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't part of our contract. Uh, and then we do have another exchange I, I can't talk of right now, but a pretty big announcement will be coming out in the next week or two. Keep your ears to the ground. I know, but I <laughs> promise as soon as we make the announcement, you'll be on the distro <laughs> so that way you get uh, first chance to ask about it. What's crypto without an announcement of an announcement? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, but, you know, we continue to engage other exchanges. We have ongoing talks with, uh, you know, crypto finance, uh, obviously um, market makers. But really what kind of gets us excited about is, you know, we, we spend a lot of time talking about the, the financial side of digital assets, uh, but we're really worried, or really excited about the idea of just being able to provide a awesome technology that goes beyond Bitcoin. Really, mm -hmm. it's all about tokenization and real world assets and stuff like that. Yeah. And so uh, operating on the fringe of traditional finance and decentralized finance, knowing that the traditional is on the outside looking in, and they are in a position where they need to have full sovereignty over their investment operations, that they see us as a possible thing to include if they're building now. Yeah. Kind of like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Don't wait for the regulation, start building now, uh, and let's see what we can do. Yeah, so who do you want to talk to, and who do you hope reaches out to you? Oh my god, I mean, Deadpool's coming out, so I want to have a conversation <laughs> with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, you heard it oh. here, Ryan. Oh, uh, yeah, Ryan. So <laughs> let's do that. Uh, yeah, you know, I think this has been an excellent environment to have some conversations that we have been having. I tell you, uh, I thought the CEO of Wisdom Tree had a pretty good discussion at the DC blockchain event. Yeah. Uh, so if they're interested in talking about, you know, uh, include improving some of their custody solutions. Yeah, definitely reach out, Let's see what happens. Um, last shoot question. big. Shoot big, shoot yeah, big yeah. stars. Uh, last question, is this your first consensus? This is my first consensus. So what's kind of like your perspective of the vibe here and like where, are, is crypto back? 
Uh, <laughs> so some of us, like my entry into crypto was about six months before Terra went down and okay. FTX went down. And I remember walking around the, the halls at Jump Trade and be like, hey, we still have a job. <laughs> We're good. You know, but yeah, it, it's been amazing to see this rebound. Like we saw Bitcoin go all the way down to what, 16,000? Yeah. And here we are. This is insane. And each time we say, oh, I'm all in. Yeah, you're not all in. And then you regret it because you rebounded. It's pretty insane. But I have another convention. I'm going to uh, Comic-Con in San Diego in a month. That is four times the size of this consensus, just so you know. So, well, Hayden, thanks it's for- It's pretty exciting. Yeah, I appreciate the conversation. Thanks yeah. for taking some time out of your day to chat with us. Awesome. Um, if you want to check out some more of the videos we've had here at Consensus, head over to Neo News Today's YouTube page to see more of the recordings we've had. And of course, if you want to see some of the full episodes we've done for the Smart Economy Podcast, head over to smarteconomypodcast.com.